truly possible for our fences in Singapore to compete at the Olympic Games or is that dream still a bridge too far? No, it's not too far because if you're working hard and you're working smart, uh, any fencer who are training a lot and uh, minimum fencers should train 15-20 hours in a week and many years. So I think this, this dream will come true. Well, you did fight back from knee surgery, like you said, in August and preparations from your A-levels at the same time, uh, while also recovering and barely enough of time to train for the SEA Games. Was it all worth it in the end? I'll say for sure, yes, it was definitely worth it. Even though it was really challenging to have to um, battle this injury, mm. since it was quite a serious injury and it also came at a really crucial time, like just before the A-levels and the SEA Games. But I'm lucky to have had um, good support around me, like my family, the physiotherapist at SSI, and my coach was super understanding. Now for those who aren't familiar with the different types of weapons in fencing, could you briefly explain to us, I mean, the usual three, I mean, you brought three here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we can, look there, that's right, the white shot. Can you just point out which is which? Yeah, um, this is the epee, this is the foil, and this is the sabre. Um, okay. There are different rules for uh, all three weapons, but the main thing is like the area you can hit to get a point. So for the FA, it's very simple. Anywhere you hit is a touch. Anywhere you hit is yeah, a anywhere. touch. Anywhere. Everywhere is fair game. Even okay. your toes. Yeah, even your toes, yeah. Mm. For foil, it's just the torso in the back. Mm. It's more like a classical. The ones that you see in the movies, it's mostly foil. It's mm. the best weapon. Stab in the back. <laughs> yeah. mm. And uh, Sabre is like crazy weapon, like slashing mm. everywhere. And these two you, get, you have to poke, but this one you can slash and cut, so most painful one. That's where the Star Wars come about. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I have experience with all three and this is the most painful one. In the secondary schools right now, uh, we actually have a good number of fences and I think we are actually seeing an increase as well, even in secondary schools and we have a good mixture at school as well because um, I, I also want to um, highlight that a lot of people might think that fencing is actually just a ATA sport or something mm, mm. but we actually do see quite a number of schools other than the typical Raffles mm. schools we also have like uh, normal uh, neighborhood most neighborhood schools. secondary schools like Greendale, Pasiris Crest and they have won medals during the national school games so we're actually seeing um, a lot of um, uh, positive actually feedback from our stakeholders and I think that is a uh, that's very uh, that that's very good for fencing Singapore.